ever wondered what our planet Earth looks like, it is like a tiny blue speck floating in a huge space from imagine it as this tiny blue dot just floating in the vastness of space. The people have been telling different stories from centuries about Earth. In today's video, we will be exploring far beyond the Earth and measure the universe, how big it is. So, are you ready to join the adventure and explore the cosmos? Welcome back to Epic Explorer with another Knowledge Pack VD. Stay tuned with. As we travel beyond Earth, past the Moon and even the Sun, we are getting on an incredible journey. Can you imagine what lies out there in the great unknown? We are on a quest to unravel the mysteries of our universe to understand just how big it really is. When we leave Earth and look at it from the Moon, which is about 384,000 kilometers away, we see it as a delicate ball of blue and green in the darkness of space. It makes us realize how small we are in the grand scheme of things. Just to give you an idea of the distance, if you were to drive a car at a steady speed of 100 kilometers per hour, it would take you over 160 days to reach the moon. So, imagine you are standing on the moon, looking back at Earth. Well, as we keep going out into space, the next big stop is the sun. It's about 93 million miles away from Earth, which is a big deal in space lingo. We measure distances in space using this unit called an astronomical unit, and it's like our ruler for the solar system. The light travels super fast, about 186,000 miles per second. So, it only takes about 8 minutes and 20 seconds for light to zoom from the sun to Earth. If you try to cover that distance in a regular jet going 560 miles per hour, it would take you a whopping 19 years. Crazy, right? This huge gap between the Sun and Earth reminds us just how extremely huge space really is. But wait, there's more. Beyond Earth and the Sun, we have got our eyes set on Mars, the red planet. When Mars and Earth are closest, they're about 34 million miles apart. But when they are on opposite sides of the Sun, that distance can stretch to a whopping 250 million miles. To give you an idea, if you hopped on a jet to Mars, it would take you over 50 years to get there. Space, man, it's mind-blowing. The space between Earth and Mars is like a huge obstacle course for exploring. We have sent rovers and probes to Mars, but it's not an easy journey. There are all these tricky things to deal with, like the distances keep changing and the orbits are always moving around. Now we have another big star, Neptune, this giant ball of ice hanging out about 2.8 billion miles from Earth. It's like the last stop in our cosmic neighborhood. The sunlight, which usually zips around at crazy speeds, it takes over four hours to reach Neptune from the sun. That's how far out it is. Let me tell you about Voyager 1, this cool space probe we launched back in 1977. It's like a symbol of our never-ending curiosity and thirst for exploration. For more than 40 years now, Voyager 1 has been zooming through space, covering a mind-blowing distance of over 13.6 billion miles from Earth. It's basically the farthest thing we have ever sent out into space. Back in 1990, thanks to the famous astronomer Carl Sagan, Voyager 1 turned its camera back towards Earth and snapped one last photo. Talk about a cosmic selfie. Remember that famous picture, the pale blue dot? It was taken when Earth was about 3.7 billion miles away and in the photo, our planet looked like this tiny faint speck floating in the vastness of space. It's pretty mind-blowing. Sean, a thinker with a poetic soul, looked at this picture and got deep. He talked about how it's up to us to take care of our little home because in the grand scheme of things, Earth is just a tiny speck in the huge universe. Now let's talk about something even further out, the Oort cloud. It's this massive cloud of icy stuff way out there in space. Some scientists think it reaches as far as 100,000 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, which is about 1.9 light years. That's almost hitting the boundary of where our solar system ends and interstellar space begins. Speaking of which, there's this line called the heliopause, it's like the edge of our solar system where the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins. The Oort cloud, that's like the last stop in our cosmic neighborhood, the final frontier before we are officially in interstellar space. You are leaving behind the cozy neighborhood of our solar system 
where the sun's influence starts to fade away and you are about to dive into the vastness of our galaxy, the Milky Way. But before we get there, we have got our eyes set on Alpha Centauri, our closest star neighbor. Now, Alpha Centauri isn't just a hop, skip and a jump away. It's about 25 trillion miles from us. That's a distance so huge that our usual way of measuring space, like using astronomical units, starts to feel small. So instead, astronomers break out the big guns and use light years. The distance light travels in a year to talk about stuff this far away. Alpha Centauri, it's about 4.4 light years from us. Even with all our fancy space tech, it's still pretty much impossible for us to visit Alpha Centauri anytime soon. Just think about it. If the Voyager spacecraft, which moves pretty fast at 38,000 miles per hour, tried to get there, it would take over 70,000 years. Yeah, mind-blowing. Now, on to the Milky Way, our massive galactic home. It's like this giant spinning disk, about 100,000 light years wide. Inside, there are billions and billions of stars, each with the potential for its own little family of planets. Even within this huge galaxy, there is a tiny bubble that is ours. It's called the human radio bubble and it's about 100 light years across. This bubble represents how far our radio and TV signals have traveled into space beyond it. Well, that's where things start to get real cosmic. In most parts of our galaxy, it's like humanity was never here. Any civilizations chilling out there wouldn't even know we exist because our signals haven't reached them yet. That's how big the Milky Way is. Our whole history, everything we've ever recorded, is just a tiny whisper lost in the vastness of space. But hold on, because it gets even wilder. Once we leave our cozy galaxy behind, we step into a whole new league, intergalactic space. It's like this mind-bendingly huge ocean where galaxies float around, separated by crazy distances. Our galaxy isn't alone. It's part of this cool club called the Local Group, which is basically a gang of more than 50 galaxies hanging out within a space of about 10 million light years. The local group isn't just filled with big galaxies like ours. No, there are also tons of smaller ones, like those cute little dwarf galaxies. The distances here are so mind-blowingly huge that if light tried to zip from one end of the local group to the other, it would take a whopping 10 million years. Wrap your head around that. So, when we think about intergalactic space, it's like this vast, quiet wilderness between these bright islands of galactic light. Our galaxy, with all our stories and history, is just a tiny speck in this huge cosmic library surrounded by countless others. And guess what? We're just getting started. Our cosmic adventure is about to go even further beyond the local group. Ready to explore more? We stumble upon something truly massive, the Virgo supercluster. It's like this gigantic gathering of galaxy gangs, including our own local group. This monster of space spans about 110 million light years across, or 33 megaparsecs if you want to get technical. Think of it as this humongous party in the universe, with thousands of galaxies hanging out, each with their own stars and planets. But hold on to your seats, because it gets even crazier. Beyond the Virgo supercluster lies the Laniakea supercluster. It's like the VIP section of the universe where all the big shots hang out. This cosmic congregation stretches over 500 million light years. It's our cosmic home on a grand scale with a name that means immense heaven in Hawaiian. And let me tell you, it truly lives up to its name. Laniakea is like this gravitational masterpiece with galaxy gangs, superclusters and countless stars all tangled up in this cosmic dance. At the heart of Laniakea sits the Great Attractor, this mysterious zone with a crazy amount of gravitational pull. It's like the boss of the whole supercluster, keeping everything in line. And guess what? In this vast space, our Milky Way, our local group, and even the Virgo supercluster are just tiny specks in this massive structure. Laniakea puts things into perspective for us. We are part of something way bigger and more majestic than we can even wrap our heads around. And just when we think we have seen it all, we hit the boundaries of our cosmic adventure, reaching the limits of what we can observe in the universe. It's like the ultimate cliffhanger in the cosmic story of exploration. We have got this mind-blowing cosmic wonder called the observable universe. 
It's like this massive playground that stretches about 93 billion light years across. The universe itself is only about 13.8 billion years old. So, how can something so huge exist in such a relatively short time? Well, it's all about cosmic expansion. Since the Big Bang, the universe has been stretching out, making more and more space between stars and galaxies. But here is where things get really wild. What's beyond the observable universe? That's still one of the biggest mysteries out there. Some parts of space are zooming away from us faster than the speed of light. That means we can never see them, no matter how fancy our telescopes are. So, we are left scratching our heads, wondering just how big the whole universe really is. It might go on forever, for all we know. Even though the observable universe is extremely huge, it might just be a tiny piece of the whole cosmic puzzle. And that's pretty humbling when you think about it. There could be whole galaxies and wonders out there that we'll never lay eyes on as they drift farther and farther away into the ever-expanding universe. We conclude our today's video here that there isn't any hard measuring tool available which can measure the whole of universe. The human eyes or tech aren't able to do it. I hope you like our today's video. Please support us by subscribing our channel, hit the bell icon and smash that like button. Thank you so much for your support.